Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at yet another AI tool, and as you know from this channel I've been reviewing a lot of them recently. This has to be one of the biggest and most impressive that I have looked at yet. So this is Infranotice, and it's a AI powered network analysis tool. Um, but to call it that really doesn't do it justice. It does so many different things, uh, and I think it's going to be useful to so many different people. So today we're going to take a somewhat brief look, and when you see how big this thing is, you'll understand why I haven't gone through all of the little bits and pieces. But I've been really impressed, and I definitely intend on making some more videos looking at some of the use cases. So here we are on our opening page. So this is just the landing page. Uh, you can see a screenshot there uh, of a network graph. Uh, one of the earlier videos that I made was on connected papers, which was a very, very simple, similar kind of looking tool that would join up uh, different academic articles. This takes that and it generalizes it. So you can use all sorts of different data and all sorts of different scenarios. So coming down, uh, we can see here that they have lots of different things that they are describing here. And they've got plenty of examples. So lots of different ways either of generating your own networks, uh, using AI to help you with that, or sourcing data from a whole lot of different places. Even more, it's very, very comprehensive. I have to say that the amount of work that's gone into this for this to kind of be a pretty new product still uh, is really, really amazing. Okay, and so you can see they've got some a whole lot of demos. I'm going to show you some demos of my own. You can see I've got a few different windows open. So when we log in, uh, we end up on this page. So I'm using the premium version. The premium version does cost a bit, uh, certainly not one of the cheaper tools that I've used. But you do get a 14 day uh, free trial, which is pretty good. And even on the lower tiers, uh, it still gives you some really good functionality. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. And if you're as impressed by me and you see it fitting into your workflows, uh, I can definitely see people paying for this because I think it adds a lot of value. OK, so taking a look at our different options here, we can see just in the quick start, we've already got quite a few things in here. So we can create mind maps. Uh, we can do AI idea generation. It links up with GPT-4 to be able to develop ideas using that. Basic Google keyword research. So some pretty cool stuff. And then when we come down here, this just absolutely blew me away. And I think if if I had one thing that is or the closest I have to a, a critique of this, it is that it is so big and so comprehensive that it really needs a little bit more onboarding. I consider myself to be a fairly technical person, and it's taken me quite a while to get my head around some of this. Uh, they do have some very comprehensive help, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But it does take a little while just to really get going. But have a look at this, and this just keeps growing. In fact, from when I used this last a day ago till now, this has even grown bigger. And just picking out some of the things in here so you can grab YouTube comments. I have not seen that in a tool yet. Amazon keywords, Amazon reviews, Wikipedia coming back up. Some of the other ones, uh, we've got Google search somewhere in there. We've got Google scholar. So we've got Google scholar, we've got Google keywords. There's just all these different sources of different types of data where you might want to try and look for networks, for patterns, uh, for linking of different topics and different concepts and use of different words. So just really amazing big mix of data sources. Beyond that, you can generate your own. So I will show you an example where I just started off, started uh, having a chat GPT session. And as I interacted with chat GPT, it created the network graph from chat GPT's answers. And that helped stimulate more ideas for me for the me to continue asking questions and having thoughts on that topic. So I'm going to show you a few different examples. Here's the first one. Uh, and so this is from a Google Scholar keyword search. Uh, and so my search statement. So uh, this one was looking at intermarriage in New Zealand. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that was topic of my PhD. 
So always curious areas where I have some uh, kind of expertise and very niche knowledge. I like to test these tools out there to see how they go because I know the kinds of articles and things that should be coming back. So I can really kind of appraise it with an expert's eye. One of the risks with some of the AI tools, and certainly we've seen it a lot with ChatGPT, is that people will use it, but they don't know enough to know how good the answers are that they're getting from it. So we can see here we've got a very, very comprehensive graph. And it takes a bit of time getting your head around, uh, but this has all been generated by the tool. So it's gone through, it's taken, um, I believe, the way that I've done it, either the top 50, maybe the top 100, uh, but I think the top 50 Google Scholar articles on the topic, and then it has started mapping, and currently it's mapping keywords, I think, out of the abstracts. And groups them, the, uh, the color codes here, we've got a little switch going from low level to high level ideas, looking at concepts. We can see the words that come up together, uh, this, these expand out. So we can see here, clicking on the plus, we get all the different ones here. We can see, um, if you do know about New Zealand and intermarriage, then Māori and Pākehā are certainly terms we would be seeing a lot of. But then when we come down to some of these other groupings, slightly other different bits and pieces, different themes, different uh, jumping from sociology to medicine to different uh, kinds of research that have been looking at it. So there's quite a lot here. It really does take a bit of bit of practice. Down the corner here, we can then add further data. We can question that piece of text actually from something else I was doing. But we, we can ask and we can look for gaps. We can actually get some analysis on this. We've got the link here to the help. Uh, you're definitely going to need a bit of that as you get going. But this really, if, if you were starting to do some research here, it's going to give you keywords that you can go off to Scholar into your databases to do searches of. It give, Off to the side here, it gives us the different articles that it's sourcing from and some key highlights from those. It's really just, for as a research tool, it gives you a lot and a lot beyond some of the other ones that we've been looking at. So the next one up that we're looking at is some YouTube comments. So this is from one of my YouTube videos. It's the one on the Myers-Briggs um, in particular, the Myers-Briggs is garbage, which I believe that it is. And so I did a video backing that up with some psychometrics and analysis and research that's been done. And it generated a lot of comments. So most comments were in agreement. Uh, there was certainly a small core of people who uh, took it that I was uh, offending their particular religion uh, and they weren't quite as happy about it. And so I thought it would be an interesting one to look at the comments because the comments... Not only were there more than my videos usually get, but they were also more detailed as well. So this was really interesting, and we can see various different things in here grouping up together. The one that I thought was pretty interesting was actually yellow, which was a smaller one. But where we've got HR, stress, recruitment, <laughs> culty. Uh, so we can see that there was a particular grouping of comments where people were talking about having to deal with that test in an HR and a recruitment environment, uh, which is certainly where it comes up and certainly also where it's very misused, being a very unreliable test. So this was quite interesting. And just being able to do this with YouTube comments, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of value, particularly if you want to get a good gauge from a really long set of comments. Coming down here on the right hand side, we have this box, thematic diversity as well. And so it talks about uh, how kind of focused the themes are that we see within our analysis. Okay, so the final example that I am going to show you today, and I certainly plan on doing more in the future because this is a pretty amazing tool, is one where you are generating the network based on a conversation with ChatGPT. So over on the left hand side, we have our ChatGPT window. So you can see AI chat. And so I can just chat to G, uh, ChatGPT how I normally would. So we can see here, how can I add AI network analysis to my research? When I put in that first one, as well as giving me this answer, it just started with a very little network, a couple of different points. And then when I started to add more questions and ideas to this, then it expanded. And so this is quite a nice way to be able to do some brainstorming 
find keywords, find things to search, help stimulate your own ideas, just by really seeing those patterns from the text of the chat GPT discussion. I didn't get too far into this one. Uh, you can see that I kind of stopped there, but it was already starting to kind of grow a graph, uh, give me some different ideas, different keywords, different things that I might choose to explore. So just jumping back, that's only a fraction of what's in here. Uh, there's definitely some analyzer transcript, analyzer book. News and RSS could be pretty interesting. A lot of podcasts use the RSS feed. Maybe you can do something clever with that. Music making is a new one. I'm not sure about MIDI using text graphs, but uh, it's perhaps more of a novelty one. Uh, but just some really, really useful stuff. If you were an Amazon um, retailer, looking at the reviews, looking at the keywords, uh, could be a pretty good one. I guess if you're making a big purchase of something that's on Amazon, could be interesting as well. But just so much, so much here. There is a little bit of filtering up the top here. So just thinking about some of the different things we might do, we can kind of filter this down so it's not quite as overwhelming. And as I mentioned before, there is help. So they have a quick start. It's a mixture of text and image and video. I'm not going to recreate that, so I think they've done a really good job. We can see as we scroll down more and more and more. Like this, this is this is comprehensive. They have put a lot of work into this. Here, if we come back up to the top, uh, so explore a topic with GPT and visualization. So they've given a video. The video has demos. Comes down. We've got step by step. There's images instructions all really nice and clear so all of this information of how to use this is here uh, because it's complex and i think because we've we've become accustomed to things being so quick and easy it takes a little bit a little bit more of a learning curve than you probably used to if you're someone that does any kind of coding anything like that though i mean you won't won't have those same issues but all pretty straightforward, step by step, with explanations of what's going on. You can see here they're explaining the different color codings, what we see off on the right hand side. Here's another one, how to produce a word cloud. Uh, so that's quite a nice one if we are just trying to summarize in a visual way, big chunks of text. We can have it networked, not networked, different colors. And again, just step by step, what to do, what to click on how to adapt, how to interpret. Uh, so really pretty amazing. So I think of all of the AI tools that I've used so far, I think outside of ChatGPT, which is really the default, uh, this is probably the most comprehensive, the one that I've been most impressed by. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, take a look, I'm sure you will find some use cases. It just does so much more and is so much more comprehensive than a lot of the tools that are out there. I hope you found this useful. Uh, I will be back really soon with more videos on AI research stats and random stuff.